Yeah, today is the day I will change my luck. I will find three pennies and they'll be heads up. I will walk like a queen in my tennies and jeans cause I know where I come from. From the stars and the sun, from that magical one, I am part of this thing called life, yeah. From the known to unseen, everything in between, I am part of this thing called life. Yeah, I'm one with this thing called life. Yeah, today is the day I will choose to see Only good, only God moving through you and me I will not forget all the treasures do me Cause I know where I come from From the stars and the sun, from that magical one I am part of this thing called life, yeah from the known to unseen, everything in between, I am part of this thing called life. Yeah, I'm one with this thing called life. Yeah, today is the day I'll be more myself, love my skin where I've been and everyone else. No more push, no more pull. I said go as I flow, simply go where I come from. From the stars and the sun, from that magical one, I am part of this thing called life, yeah. From the known to unseen, everything in between, yeah, I'm part of this thing called life. From the stars to the sun, from that magical one, I am part of this thing called life. From the known to unseen, everything in between, yeah, I'm part of this thing called life. Yeah, I'm one with this thing called life. Well, I am, are you? Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's the way to be it. So thank you so much for having me here today. It is, it's been a fun journey working with Myra and us coordinating all this. And it's always a great thing to get to experience other communities. And I know it's a great thing for my community to get to experience somebody other than me. <laughs> so. So we will also, they're getting ready to start there in about 10 minutes, so we'll just send them love, knowing that they're going to have a great experience with each other this morning. So one of the things that I want to say that I did absolutely love in your announcements, when it was talking about the potluck, and down, there was an asterisk. <laughs> and that piece down that was the asterisk, crowd-sized portions. I love that. Bring a dish. Crowd-sized portions. Shouldn't we be doing that with everything in our life? You know, shouldn't we? So if we are truly in the place of living our inheritance, everything in our experience should be crowd-sized. Why do I want a little bitty, dinky, single, tiny, minute serving of life. Why would I want that? When I know that everything in all aspects of consciousness are available in more than I can even imagine. But yet, oh, well maybe, maybe I'll just take a taste of that. Have at it. Knock yourselves out. Go for the big stuff. Go for the big stuff. If we know the next slide. Your divine inheritance is unlimited and requires only that you say yes. So, yes. say yes. Let's do it. Yes. Is that all of you? Yes. Is everybody willing to say yes? 
So bring it on, right? It's all mine. It's all available to us. So have any of you ever inherited anything? Have any of you ever been the recipient of a trust fund? You know, I've heard this and I've seen it and I've known a few of individuals that we kind of go, well, you know, they're trust fund babies. Go ahead and give me the next slide. They're trust fund babies. They think it, it's all theirs. It all comes easy to them. They don't have to work for it. But do you know why it is that we feel that way? Because we have forgotten who we are. And we have forgotten the inheritance that is truly ours. And we're thinking that we have to work hard for everything. Is that true? What we've done is we've created the hardness. We've created those blocks through our error thoughts of who we are. But you know what? We have the capabilities of being just in the middle of all of the riches of life, all of the riches of the universe, if we just get out of our own way. There's a story in Matthew and you can go ahead and pull the next, there you go. And you can go ahead and pull the next slide. Because in Matthew, there's a story about this rich man. And he's going away. And he has three servants that he has entrusted. And to each of the servants, he gives basically an inheritance or a trust. So he gives one servant. Let's put this in, in terms that we're really cool with, other than so many talents because the conversion rate has changed since that happened. <laughs> so he gives one servant $5,000. Blesses him, tells him go, you know. He gives another servant 2000 Blesses him. He gives the third servant 1000 And I'm sure that a lot of this was because he kind of knew who these folks were. But everything was available. So do you know the story? Do you remember what happens? The servant with the 5,000 goes out and, and invests and really works with that and comes back and it's like, oh. And when the master returns sometime later, he goes, oh look, I have multiplied the gift. And the, and the master, the rich man, was very happy and blessed and, and said, you know, great. You've done a fabulous job. I am very pleased. The second comes back that had been given 2,000, and he had also done some things and invested and worked with it and multiplied it. The third servant comes in and goes, Look, Master, I've saved you your $1,000. Really? Just that? Why just that? Well, I buried it because I was afraid that someone would steal it. How many times do we bury our inheritance and our joys and our love because we're afraid? Either that we won't have enough. It's like, if I love you, then I may not have enough love to love this one over here or that one back there. Do we ever, I'm sure I'm the only one that's ever gotten caught up in that kind of consciousness, <laughs> right? Yeah. Nobody here has ever experienced that. No, okay. So this servant basically wasted an opportunity. Wasted an opportunity. Go ahead and give me the next slide. Because it's all about investing our good, investing our prosperity, investing our joy. Because we've inherited it all, haven't we? It's all available to us all the time. We were born with it. It was present before we were born. And yet we forget. You know, when we talk about abundance or prosperity, usually people immediately go to the whole thing of money, about what's in the bank or what's in your pocket. But what I know is our greatest abundance comes in all aspects of our beingness. 
It comes in our friendships, our relationships. It comes in our community. It comes, yes, in our bank account. But to have a joy-filled life, to me, is so much more than just what I can write a check for. But what I've also come to know is that if I am living in that flow of abundance, if my consciousness is totally linked with the divinity that I am, that other all falls into place. It all falls into place. How rich are you in laughter? Is that something you do often? Is it? Show me. <laughs> Show me. Laugh. Oh, man, that's hysterical. Does that feel good? Does it feel good to laugh? Come on. You guys. Now, now, I'm used to interaction. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping Myra's ready for the group that she's got in, in Omaha this morning because they're going to talk back to her. <laughs> and I warned her. But to me, that's an abundance of spirit because we are in relationship in this journey, are we not? We absolutely are. We absolutely are. So I would be remiss if I didn't actually use something from Fillmore. Go ahead and give me the next slide. So back in 1916, Charles Fillmore was doing a talk on Christian healing. And what he said was, whenever anyone denies his true inheritance as the Son of God, and we know that back in those days, everything you know, that Charles talked about, he did with the, the masculine sense, because he was talking about that universal God, and all the time when he would talk about he, he was talking about mankind. So we do that little tweak interpretation in our minds, right? So whenever anyone denies his true inheritance as the Son of God, as a child of God, in thought, word, or deed, whenever we use our God-given faculties or powers for the building up of the outer, or sense man for our physical beingness, we are selling our birthright. When we lose sight of who we are and we are not living from our divine nature, from our Christ nature, from our beingness, we are selling our birthright. So next time you get caught in a situation where somebody's irritated you and you want to get a little snarly, that never happens here, right? Okay. Okay. Next time you want to get a little snarly or a little bitter, about and say something or give up your joy, remember what you're doing. You're selling out your birthright. Because your birthright is to be joyous, to be a joyous child of the divine. And we're giving it away. We're getting caught in error thoughts, aren't we? And we're giving it away. You know, I'm reminded, and I was talking, Reverend Carla is with me this morning, and we were driving in, and we were talking, and I never know when I get on stage <clears throat> what stories are going to decide to emerge. Uh-oh, Brenda. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, <clears throat> Carla, it's okay. She, just as long as you call her, she doesn't care. And I was sharing some stories with her as I was driving up about some different things in my life. And one of the stories that came up, and I said, I don't know if this is going to come out in the talk or not, but we'll see. And remembering to live from who we are and know who we are. So how many of you really know who you are? Do you know that you are a divine child of God, that you are living here to be that in expression? And that every day, in order to remember that, we have to exercise that, don't we? So as I was thinking about this whole piece of living from whom we are, and then sometimes we get a little derailed, 
And, some, and usually when we get derailed, we're going to blame it on somebody else because it's always their fault. It reminds me of what happens whenever we get off the path. And I remember my father, he retired. They bought a place in, in Tennessee and some acreage, and there was a pond. And It was like every time I would go to visit, he was sitting out in the garage just sitting there looking. I said, Dad, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just enjoying this. Okay. Time and time again and time again. And he was always sitting there. And I said, you know, we need to talk about this because it seems like you've taken up residence out here, sitting on your duff, observing the world go by. And he goes, well, you know, I can watch the neighbors go by and I can watch the birds and watch all the things that go on here and down at the pond. I said, okay, but what about you? What about you? And he said, well, I've worked a long life. I went, okay. He said, you know, I've worked since I was 12 years old. And at this point, he was probably close to 70. I went, okay. And I said, and? He said, well, I deserve the right just to sit. I went, okay, well, there's a difference between deserving, which I agree, you deserve the right to do, whatever. But it's, it saddens me that you're just hanging out. And I said, do you realize that the more you just hang out, the more of yourself is disappearing? And he never really got it. And I will tell you, the sadness of this is that because he sat down, inertia took over. Because he sat down, his body began to fail. Because he sat down, his mind began to fail. And he missed some extremely joyful years. Do we do that in our spiritual practices? We have the abundance of all that is. Do we just kind of say, oh, well, I've done all my spiritual work. I'm just going to hang out now. Doesn't work that way, does it? When we do that, we are selling our birthright. Spiritual growth and development, the practice of prosperity in all aspects, it's not a spectator sport. One of the things I like to say, it's an all skate. It's an all skate. It's something for us all to do. It's for us all to be involved in it in concert with our divinity and in concert with each other. Does that make sense? You know, there's that other saying, if you don't use it, you lose it. And we will never lose our divinity, but we will lose sight of it. We will be out of the practice of engaging it. So I encourage us all, look at your inheritance. Everything that ever is, everything that ever was, and everything that ever will be is present to you right now, right now. And it's up to us, isn't it? How do I engage with it? Do I bring it into my experience? Do I bring it into my life? Do I share it with those around me? Life is sweet. Life is short. Life is filled with joy and abundance. And it is ours to come into a time and a place of recognizing it, of utilizing it, and making the most of our trust fund, of our inheritance. So are you rich? Yes. Beyond measure? Yes. Okay. Do you ever get caught up in being concerned there's not enough? I was really hoping they weren't going to lie to me. <laughs> because we're all breathing and we all do it, right? Go ahead and give me the next slide. Don't blow the inheritance. If you get caught up in stinking thinking, let it go. 
Let it go. It's not yours to hang on to. And what I know is that just as much as joy and love are contagious, so is the attitude of abundance. And I would like to think that this community has an attitude that reaches across the planet. I would like to think that as Unity students, that we have the ability to take what we know is true, to take who we know we are and shine it bright, shine it across the planet and be the beacons for the world, be the beacons for peace because it looks like, you know, you guys are working on that. But there's so much of it. There's so many little intricate parts in peace, isn't there? And a consciousness of abundance is one of those places where peace tends to, you know, it's necessary. If we are in a place of lack, unrest, and things that don't look like peace have a tendency to show up. So if we want to be peace, we need to be in that place of abundance and remember who we are. We have an abundance of love. We have an abundance of friendship. We have abundance of teachings. We have an abundance of life. We have abundance of everything. And that comes to us through our divinity of who we are. Because we know, as true students, that whatever's going on on the inside manifests on the outside, right? So let's, you know, and then sometimes I'm like, oh gosh, don't let them see what's on the outside because then they're going to know what's going on on the inside and I don't want them to see that. <sighs> and we wear ourselves out trying to hide what's maybe going on instead of taking it out and working with it and polishing it up and remembering. So what I'd like to do is in the, the next slide, this is a, an affirmation that I would like for us to say together. And then after that, we're going to move into a time of meditation. I receive my inheritance with joy and my actions support unlimited abundance. Again. I receive my inheritance with joy and my actions support unlimited abundance. Does that feel true? Yes. Is that something you could take within yourself and move through your week? Yeah? Oh, wow. This is cool. It's working. You are abundant. You are the heirs to all that is. And together, we can raise the vibration of this planet. And let's take that knowing and move into a time of meditation.